confess to that. Okay, right, so let's go on to the second talk. Um, so Simon is going to talk about um, DevOps for Hub Development. Um, yeah, over to you, Simon. Sure. Hi, I'm Simon Tate. All righty. Thank you. Haven't even started a round of applause. <laughs> Uh, so, hi, I'm Simon Tate. I'm one of the uh, hub team in BT, and I'll talk more about what that... Mic's not working. Hello. Does that work better? Yes. <laughs> Good. I'm a, a manager and developer within BT's hub team, so I am technical, so we can answer some questions on that. Um, so, uh, I guess I'll talk more about what the hub team is. Um, how we've used DevOps and why, and then why we've kind of got a hub team in BT at all. Uh, and then kind of how all of our DevOps works, how that's happening, and where our maybe pain points are at the minute, um, and where we're going next. So first, what do we do, and what's a hub? Um, so it's the router in your home. Um, we connect to the OpenReach network over uh, VDSL or an Ethernet cable. Uh, and we connect to extenders as well, so we cover these as well. Uh, so they are the uh, kind of things that sit in your home to give you Wi-Fi. But they do a lot more than that as well. <laughs> uh, so we've been recently featured in the brand new EE advert, although we have some more and I'll talk about that not being the last. But um, so that is um, that's been everywhere. So that's our late, that's our first hub launch with the in-house software. So we've just written all the code for this hub and the extender that sits on it as well, um, and I'll talk more about that as well. So first take us back to how we used to develop hubs three, four, five years ago, uh, and where we were then. So some of you might recognize this as a waterfall uh, development flow. So we first analyzed the problem. Uh, found an OEM of a limited pool, so an original equipment manufacturer. Um, we could only use a couple of them because only a couple had the technology that we wanted and we could use and we'd worked with before. We then design how the hub is supposed to work. We write down thousands of requirements, I think uh, 8,000 to 10,000 lines of requi uh, 8, requirements themselves with various levels of description within them. We would then tell them to go and build it, pay them millions, and they would take two to three years to build that thing. Um, we would then test it, tell them it's wrong, and then go back, and they would rebuild some elements of that. They'd, we'd come back, we'd test it for six weeks or so manually, and then we'd tell them to it's wrong again, and repeat that cycle until we had a hub we were happy enough with to trial and deploy with our users. And then once it was deployed, we kind of forget about it. There's some, some releases every kind of quarter or so. We would release uh, quality of life features or security uh, fixes, but the releases are slow, have to go back through this test process, and are painful. We then get to the next hub, and we don't go to the same OEM, because that wouldn't be very good for the competition. So we go to a new OEM, tell them to do the same thing, and repeat the process. So, I think we can all find what's wrong with that. <laughs> so we have a really small OEM pool. As I said, there's two or two, three kind of OEMs could do this. Uh, we had low chipset possibilities. They had relationships with particular chipset manufacturers. Um, we had to restart with every generation. We were paying every single OEM to start again. Um, and it was really slow to deliver. We also had some differences to manage each of those different variants um, from our infrastructure. They all had subtle differences that we had to account for. So we decided to fix it. So we have created a single hardware agnostic software platform. Well, that was our goal for all new hubs and extenders. So we decided we would write the code, we'd own the code, and we'd move on. Uh, we wanted to test and release to our customers in under 24 hours or so. We wanted to deliver quickly. You know, we wanted to follow some DevOps methodologies, get value to our customers soon. Um, and we wanted to improve our time to market of new hubs. 
So what did we do? We have built something called Indigo, uh, Project Indigo, over the past uh, years, five years, four years, something like that. And this is an OpenWRT based distribution. So we have taken everything that open source project OpenWRT have done, used a software partner called Iopsis, who are a Swedish company who uh, build on top of OpenWRT for, um, for telcos. We purchased that source code directly uh, and got some of that from open source as well. And we've added some third-party services, which are not listed, but we've got some third-party additional services and some BT user space services on top that we've written the code for. And we build our CI CD pipeline to deliver this through GitLab as well. So I'll go into detail on the CI CD pipeline, which is probably the bit everyone wants. <laughs> so uh, our goals for this were to build as quickly as possible, test, test quickly, give really good confidence that we're going to do what we want to do. So here is the start of our pipeline. <laughs> Um, so we start, it's fairly traditional I guess to start with, we have static analysis and linting at the left. We use various languages, someone mentioned about languages before. We use um, lots of Python, lots of C, lots of um, shell scripts as well, both on and off the hub, so on the hub for the C and off the hub for the Python that does some orchestration and things. Um, we also do unit testing in there for some of our packages. We then move on to building all of our different um, hardware uh, platforms. And then we move on to our test pipeline. So we use a downstream pipeline to then test all of that. And this is just an emerge request. So this is our quickest pipeline. Um, you, yeah, anyone who does web development will be shocked at how slow this is compared to yours. But um, we effectively insert hardware here and we start testing all of the access types that people can have in their homes, so the, the internet access, and how we can manage the hubs if it works with IPv6 and if voice works and there's some other basic things here. This is basically confirming that we've not done any regressions or not any obvious regression at least. Um, there is also a little element there, virtual tests. So we also, we don't use this as extensively as we should, but we also use um, virtual machines and build a virtual hub as well and test that first. That's at the moment to ensure we don't break anything on our actual lab. So I think the most interesting part of this that I'll talk about is maybe the hardware test. So how do we actually test that a physical hub is working. Um, so we start with the home. So this is what we're looking at. This is what we're wanting to test. A hub sat in a house. You've got a laptop connected or a computer connected with a wire. You've got a phone over Wi-Fi. And that's then connecting to the green boxes in the road, the all have seen probably, and then over to the internet. And we want to start with this, but we can't buy a house for every hub we want to test. <laughs> so, so we have to do a bit more, right? We have to scale this a bit further. As you saw in the last slide, there's, well, I don't know, 10 tests or so. And that's on our merge requests. We can't have 10 houses for every merge request. So we start cutting bits off. So what we do is we chop off the internet and the DSLAM that sits in your road, and we replace it with Docker. So we have a switch that sits there on the other side of the hub with a single port on it, uh, the VLAN. And then we connect out to a PPPoE server, which is simulating what happens in the uh, radius and VRAS. We then build upon that and add the internet. So <laughs> HTTP server and DNS and WAN services. We can plug in various bits of the internet or representations of the internet onto the side of this so that we can simulate certain services. We then tear away the house <laughs> and replace it with LAN services. So these are replicating what's happening on your device. So what's happening on your laptop, what's happening on whatever thing you've got connected, a server or whatever. 
And then the more difficult bit is we then replace the um, Wi-Fi components. <laughs> Those are the hardest bits. Um, you'll see that in a minute. But we then have Wi-Fi radio heads that connect into the hub as well. And then we connect that all up to a Docker service. Um, so this is a Docker network effectively over a couple of switches. Um, and we connect it to a robot framework test service. So this can access anywhere on the network. So what we do in a lot of our tests, for example, would go into the PPPoE server, make sure the right traffic is going over there, go into the LAN, request an IP address, something like that, right? Um, and then we scale it. So we have hundreds of these little setups. We have hundreds of hubs and they all have this captive environment around it. Um, it's taken a couple of years to build it up to this, <laughs> um, but this is where we're sitting now. This enables us to repeat our tests, we can change out certain components, we can add new components. So this hub, we can swap that out for a different hub, we can put in whatever we want into this environment. Uh, all of these services are plugins s services, so all you need is Docker. You need to build a Docker image, and then you can add a service. So, how did we then build that <laughs> physically? You've got to do the physical side of it. So we took a big room in our Ipswich uh, research labs, uh, knocked everything down that was in there, uh, dusted it off, I guess. Um, Got some people in with some ladders, including the man in the ceiling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> knocked out the floor. We had to uh, structure the floor, restructure the floor again for the weight of all of our test lab. And then we inserted server racks, which will be familiar to some of you, I guess. Um, and then we added all of our hubs. So this, is, this was actually in 2021 or so, but we got basically those hubs there, all connected to switches, all connected to servers, to do the Docker bit we were talking about. We also got this side of things. So all of these are RF chambers. This is how we do our Wi-Fi testing. So we, before, it's the same system. Um, it's all the connectivity, it's just over a different medium. So we have these RF cables connecting each of the RF chambers together and they are effectively the same as the wires in the previous one. And they allow us to, to verify that Wi-Fi is working. Th these aren't necessarily used for performance testing but are used for access and you can turn, you can simulate the house. So what we'll often do is we'll have an extender, an extender and a hub and then a client and we'll simulate you moving around the home. Um, by adjusting attenuation between the RF chambers. So, has all this done it? And you remember this uh, picture from the other sides? <laughs> um, I would say we've, so the development side of things, we've gone from taking years to build something and months to get some new code to that taking now as long as it takes to write the code. <laughs> it then takes half an hour or so to build so that's really good for us. We're building a full Linux distribution, not anything else. So it takes half an hour for us to build. We then are pretty good at testing this stuff now. We've got the test environment. We're really good at releasing. We do that, well, I'll say really good. We're really good for our industry at releasing. We're doing that once a week or so, which is good for embedded. Um, we are struggling currently with deployment and operation, and, but we're good at monitoring. So in deployment, we have some additional challenges. Um, we have to have CE certification on our hubs, so they have to have a little CE label to say that they're safe for your house. And we also have to pass a few other uh, certification things to connect to the network. So at the moment, we can't deploy extremely quickly to live, but we can deploy quicker to our trialists. So we have a select number of internal trialists who, who try out our hubs and we, we test, we can roll out to them relatively quickly with some exemptions from, from our certification. Um, but this is the, these are the areas we're really trying to work on now. Now we're in a live situation, we're trying to work on those. Okay. So where next? You know, we've, we've got there, we've released a hub, we're able to uh, build it, 
But next up is more hubs. There's the business wants to be able to release more features, more things, more customers, and we want to be able to deliver those. So that means more testing for us, more hubs in our test lab. The test lab is growing. I think we've reached capacity of the room. David, see him. <laughs> Almost reached the capacity of the room. So, you know, we're looking at poaching the room next door as well. Um, and we're going to get more customer features. You know, we want to deliver. Now we've built the base. We have more capacity for ourselves to build some more customer-facing features. So things that you should see in a home near you kind of thing that will improve quality of life, improve our um, position. And that's what DevOps is really giving us, or at least having the software in-house is really giving us, is the ability to release those, that value to the customer. Um, yeah, so we want to improve our, also want to improve our time to live from a few weeks at the moment um, to hours, as fast as we can. But as I say, certification and conformance stuff is standing in our way at the moment. So that's all I have to talk about. Have you got anyone got any questions? Brilliant. Nice one, Simon. Great talk, great talk. I love that RF stuff. That's uh, amazing. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like anybody's got any questions. So. No. <laughs> well, where the hell do I start? Let's start over here. Hi, so actually, it's a great presentation. And uh, many people are not aware about embedded DevOps. Yeah. So, this was the great one. And my question is like, uh, so this is end-to-end -end, uh, full automation, yeah. or like uh, how is any manual intervention in between this? So. Um, so, all of our stack is automated, all the stuff you saw. Mm -hmm. um, there are other teams in BT who test manually. Okay. Um, so that is kind of part of the couple of weeks to, to live. With, trying to help them along the journey to automation as well. Okay, so the one other question is like uh, hardware part. So you, you write some scripts mm -hmm. to test the protocols, so maybe I square C or like uh, whatever that you want. Yeah. So any course, okay? So you separately write the scripts to execute all these steps. For example, Wi-Fi WLAN. Mm -hmm. So you have the, some protocols to test behind it. Yeah. So you have to separately write some build script to run on some machine to interact with the Wi-Fi and test and produce a test report. Yeah, exactly. So we, all of those kind of protocols you're talking about, we have to find ways to to get lower and test and to connect things to them. Um, so, for example, the Wi-Fi area, we we have to cr get a Wi-Fi radio head. We have to put it into certain modes and try and look at the protocol definition that's coming out of that as well, and make sure that's all okay. So we use PCAPs a lot and things like that for the IP networking stuff at least. Great, okay, more, high, more hands, 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 hands. Uh, let's go there. Thank you for showing the photos I was gonna ask and um, how you um, organize the rack. Yeah. Uh, please comment on, on C, the CE uh, uh, certification, I don't know about it. Yeah. But I, I, um, I was gonna ask you to comment on how do you install the OpenWRT in the devices if you use T uh, TFTP or, or if you use serial? I, I have tinkered with it, I, I did both. I also with open, uh, OPN Sense. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, do you break these devices? I have unbricked, yeah. I have bricked and unbricked more than once and it's quite yeah. fun. Yeah, you're um, realizing some of our challenges, right? That's why we have that chemo phase, the first virtual phase, to try and make sure that everything is okay. But it does have some leaks. So sometimes we do upgrade to a bad build in tests, um, and that will sometimes take out a proportion of our hubs in the in the lab. So we often have to use U-boot or TFTP upgrades to to then rectify that situation. You always install with TFTP? No, we always install with SysUpgrade usually, the Linux side, the, the OpenWRT side. Um, but on recovery, it's TFTP. Okay, let's go here. You've talked a lot about the challenges in yeah. terms of like putting all this software and testing and everything together, but would you say that was more of a challenge or was it convincing people this is the right way to go was more of a challenge? We're still convincing people. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so we regularly do little pictures like this to other areas of the business, telling them the benefits that they can have. Once they realise that they don't have to spend all the money every two to three years, and they get the value quicker, they, they soon come on board. Select DevOps 101 then. Okay, uh, let's go on, my girl. How do we choose? Go on then, you put your hand up really high. <laughs> Thank you so much, this was really interesting. So my question is, in this system, you have now multiple external dependencies, like you are simulating different pieces. So I imagine that with this like extended system, you can get like false, for example, like false figures. Yep. So is this a very concern? And how do you like differentiate if the, f the build is failing because some some hardware simulation system is failing, or is this a Really good question, and I wish we'd talked to you four years ago. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> we have that problem consistently. Um, we have been building on the uh, infrastructure, making sure that everything's reliable significantly over the past few years, and <laughs> we've come to the decision that an infrastructure is failure is still a failure for us. And that means that we have to come together with the infrastructure team and fix it together. We have previously accepted infrastructure failures and then that hides other failures and then you get a load of failing tests and you then have to stop work on everything else and try and fix them. Uh, failure, failure is failure. Excellent. Uh, this side for Jake. That's this side? Yeah. Have I always been there? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, that side. It's not about my politics, I promise. <laughs> Thank you for giving me honest on it. Thanks. Um, with the certification, or maybe anywhere else in the, in the, in the phases, mm. um, do, do you use formal verification? Is that something that's... So, so the certification goes to a formal test house usually. So for CE, we go to CE test houses, uh, either you know in the UK or near our manufacturers. Uh, for MCT, which is our connection to the network conformance, that is a test house in Ipswich in OpenReach. So it has to go through them. Is, is that just a hardware level or is it software as well? That is making sure you're not breaking the network when you connect a device. So it's um, hardware and software. Okay, so you, you do actually do formal software verification where you outsource it? Uh, for, for particular reasons, yeah. Not for functional stuff except for the uh, connection to the network, but yeah. Okay, this side, this side, go on then. Firstly, well done. Doing anything with CICD on hardware is hard. Thank you. <laughs> My question is, um, with a router, there are some physical elements that you need to test in terms of, for instance, what happens if someone pulls out the Ethernet port? Yeah. Have you incorporated this into like, your hardware test suite? So not necessarily pulling a socket out, we usually simulate that by turning a switch up and down on the other side. Yeah, okay. Um, but specifically, we also have problems like there's buttons on the hub, right? Yeah. So in some of our cases, there are little robots that go doop. <laughs> okay, so you the whole <laughs> servo well, room for pushing the ladder button. <laughs> yeah, in one or two cases, yeah. I'm going to sneak a second question in. Oh, Just wow. This is generation one of the hubs. So I assume you're going to do two and three, etc. going forwards. Are you going to run the same suite of hardware tests for all of them? Or are you going to try and optimize away some of the more longer time ones? Yeah, so we will run all of the suites of tests on like a nightly or release basis. But on a merge request, because we want it to be quick and have decent enough coverage, we have to select where we run those. So we often will run those on our larger population devices. Brilliant. Okay, I feel like there are more hands up than there are down. Um, I think we're going to have to going to have to call it there. Um, but obviously, Simon, you can see how much interest in this talk. Um, it's uh, it's massive. So please don't assault him all at once when we finish uh, with your extra questions. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's have another massive round of applause. Uh,